Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Today's guest is Brian Reynolds. Brian runs the firm Climate Money Policy, which advises companies on climate, carbon, and sustainability issues. In addition, Brian is a member of the United Nations Economic and Social Council and gives frequent public talks on the impact of climate change to the health of the marketplace, including a major one last year at TEDx. His clients find him when they want to learn about the thinkability and protect their business against climate carbon shocks that business school and entrepreneurship didn't prepare them for. Welcome, Brian. Good morning. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Brian, could you describe your perfect prospect? Who do you help? Sure. So our company um, really services in, in a, a B2B marketplace. Uh, the, the clients who work for us generally are large enough that they're entering that mid-market space. So, you know, call it um, somewhere north of 75 million U.S. annually in revenue. Um, although there's exceptions, you know, I, I tell my team all the time that, you know, for 90% of our clients, 90% of the time we can, we can kind of pick out what they're going to look like in advance, <clears throat> but there's always the exceptions because you never know what sort of needs they're going to have. We've, we've worked with some very small companies and some tremendously large ones, but, uh, most of the time it's, it's companies that are just growing into that mid market space. And they're, they're at the point where they have to start looking at business not just in terms of whatever the widget is that they want to sell or whatever the basic service is that they want to offer, but they have to start looking more broadly at their, their liabilities in the market, uh, where risks are going to come. And they've got these kind of meta business issues that they ha that have surfaced for them where they want to make sure that they're protected against a certain kind of risk. Um, that's usually who we're looking at. Excellent. And how do you help them? I mean, what are their two to three problems, real or perceived, that you solve for them? Why would they be interested in what you have to say? Right. So when companies are getting into this space, they've got this, this additional set of concerns, right? There are, there are issues of risk that pop up that they have not generally been advised to look at. So for, for the sake of example, we have one client who, you know, I, I met the gentleman through uh, a handshake introduction at a cocktail party. Turns out he runs a, you know, a roughly $100 million operation, which is a, a, you know, a clothier. They do some custom embroidery work. Um, and he, he was relatively polite but dismissive of what we do. He just didn't think that it, it fit into his orbit. So over the course of, of talking to him over a meal the following week, I said, okay, well, you, you may never work with us, but out of curiosity, uh, your facility, you know, how, how, how do you think about, you know, it, as climate changes and things get warmer, you know, how are you figuring in the, the OPEX cost for more air conditioning? Uh, what's the concerns that you have about sourcing cotton in places where now it's a lot drier and you're having a lot more difficulty, I'm sure, uh, you know, sourcing things. You know, 60% of the cotton grown in the world is grown in drought-prone areas, which is kind of frightening. And just bringing up this suite of questions to him made him realize how the foundations of his business are built on, you know, the foundations of, that all business builds on, and that is a, a stable climate and a stable marketplace. And climate encourages a less stable marketplace. There really isn't any good discipline that rises organically on an organization's radar to make them think about climate as a business issue. And so most of the time when we start working with someone, it's because they have the sneaking suspicion that they should do a checkup and see if there's something here to worry about. Um, and then, you know, what we find there is uh, you know, really open to whatever the needs of the organization are. Everybody's different. So we, we find sometimes very positive situations, sometimes very complicated and, and needy situations. Um, but in all situations, you know, what we're diving into is how do they operate and what sort of risks do they have and what sort of risks are going to just increase over the course of the next few years 
um, that they may not have been taking stock of up until the point where we darkened their doorway. Sure. How do you solve their problem? What is your magic expert ability and how and why do you become their customer? So my background personally, the reason I started this, I, I have had this fairly long history in a bunch of different businesses, uh, all in manufacturing and energy and consultancy. And the thing that makes us different is that we're a very hard headed kind of capitalist approach to looking at climate. Um, for that reason, we can talk about these issues, which I think sometimes kind of get relegated to um, thinking, you know, most companies do not think about climate, carbon, and sustainability necessarily as core business principles. They may think of them as you know, ESG issues or things that marketing is concerned with. And we're firmly committed to the idea that these things need to be connected to the line of the CFO or the, the, the chief operation or the chief financial officers of the company, because that's where climate and carbon really have a big impact. Uh, they have a huge impact on operations, on finance, on costs. Um, so because of the diverse background, everybody here has been selected because they, they've got rich history in a, a bunch of different uh, verticals and industries. You know, we can talk to people about their business with an acumen that comes from having been in many different businesses. So we're not singing from, uh, you know, kind of a, a one track playbook to, to mix metaphors there. Um, you know, we, we have a diversity of thought here that really gives us a, a, a plasticity when we're talking with our client. I think that they benefit from, from being able to see that we're taking care to really understand what they're doing there. Um, and as a consequence, when we make a suggestion about where they may have a risk, and it may be something as simple as, um, you know, we, we have one client <clears throat> who's in shipping who, um, you know, we, we talked to him about uh, all sorts of different risks. And, and uh, he said, hey, we we got done with the conversation. He said, so what are you going to tell me, that I need solar panels? We said, no, your, your loading dock is six inches too low. The next <laughs> flood, you're going to lose the first floor. And that's not usually, you know, it was a big surprise to him because he thought when we first met that, okay, these guys are going to come in and they're going to try and green up my company. And that's not the risk that we worked on with him because we really thought that he had a, a far greater liability from this other thing. So I think that that's what's different about us is we, we create this situation where we understand their company really deeply and we're able to talk their language because we've, we've spoken the language of business with people from so many different walks of the market. Excellent. Okay. What are the one or two popular misconceptions about your service you provide and the results it produces? Yeah, you know, I think that that gets back to where people think that we're going to approach this from. Um, you know, here in the States, there's still an overwhelming sense that um, – Climate may not necessarily be connected to um, to issues of of core business needs. Um, you know, we don't make any recommendations at all unless those recommendations can come with an ROI that feels good to uh, that feels good to the the uh, the CFO and the CEO. We want to make recommendations that are tied to profit. Uh, they're tied to sensible business decisions. And I think most people still think, oh, this is something that the marketing should be worried about or that, you know, a, a company should be looking at if it can afford it, you know, and, and it's just not the case. Um, very often when we're talking to people, they've had a conversation with somebody upstream from them. You know, they supply into another organization and that other organization uh, has started taking this seriously as a big company often will. And they're saying to themselves, okay, well, we better get on the same page as our biggest supplier or our biggest customer. And um, uh, and they had not expected to have a conversation with somebody like me. But boy, oh boy, does it, it make a big difference to them when they do. Sure. Um, what do you think is the main reason that a person you can help most decides not to buy from you? Is it price, time commitment, 
What others would you think? Not convinced it would work for them? Yeah, you know, the, the tricky part here is that for most of the people that we talk with who I leave the meeting knowing that we can help them and they leave the meeting uh, deciding that they're not going to make a purchase. Um, those situations generally come when there's, when we've just done a, we haven't been able to do a good enough job of, of painting a picture for them. So the, the example I like to use is this. <clears throat> if you go back 20 or 30 years, uh, you're going to find far fewer levels of insurance among companies. Uh, companies may not have had business interruption insurance. They may not have had insurance around the liabilities of particular activities of their, uh, uh, of their employees. Um, but over the course of time, businesses have gotten more and more comfortable understanding the intangibles that are out there that they need to control for. And that's what insurance is. It's this kind of, you know, you can't really touch insurance. It's just this thing which exists, which uh, you, you need to get your head around how it plays in because it's not a widget that you can see. Um, we're, so you flash forward and businesses now understand that intangible kind of amorphous concept that they have to <laughs> make monthly payments for. Sure. We're in that same category of things. You know, we're a providing a service for companies that um, doesn't have hasn't had a really great case made for itself globally, and as a consequence, if, if they just don't see how this intangible thing relates to what they do, if they don't you know buy into the underlying idea of you know to paraphrase here that that we need insurance for you know if the building burns down if that doesn't click to them yes. um, then they're not going to go that extra step and and sign on with us. Okay. Is there anything else, Brian, that you think you'd like to share with the listeners? Well, you know, I, I was thinking about this in in the middle of our conversation here. Um, my sense is that for a lot of your audience, uh, they're not our perfect client you know that that you're you're working with a lot of entrepreneurs a lot of scrappy startup type guys and that's wonderful that you know for everybody in that category they should be worried really deeply worried about how to make build a better mousetrap you know they've got hard hard work to just creating a, a some sort of thing that's going to go make a dent in the world but it's far more likely that the first time they encounter somebody like me it's going to be when their biggest client turns to them and says hey you know, we need to get control of the carbon footprint of our entire supply chain. And you're part of our supply chain, buddy. And it could be their services. It could be some product that they're supplying. But the way that I tend to interact most with small business owners is that they have been pushed by somebody else. They've been pushed by somebody that they do business with to take stock of their liabilities uh, to worry if there's going to be a flood that's, you know, it, it, as waters rise, are they, uh, is their supply chain going to be an issue? Um, and that is a case where even as a small business, it may make sense to go ahead and start talking with uh, a professional like myself or somebody like me, because it's in that situation where, you know, you can turn to the supply chain partner, the biggest client and say, hey, look, in addition to everything else, we're protected against risk of, you know, additional heat or, uh, you know, tidal water uh, flooding damage or whatever it is in a way that other like companies in this area are not protected because we've thought about this stuff. And that's very impressive to uh, the large company that needs to put somebody in its supply chain. It's very impressive to them to know that you've thought about business in terms of the risks that they have to think about uh, because most small businesses don't do that. So I, I would suggest that that might be something that uh, uh, that you know you, maybe some of your audience should keep in the back of its head. Brilliant, thank you very much, Brian. Um, that's a fantastic interview. Um, yes, thank you very much, and uh, <laughs> you're welcome. Goodbye for now. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Brian. Bye. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.